Good morning, aspirants. International issues. What to study in international issues? How to approach international issues? What type of question UPSC asks in international issues? It's a very significant question or a million dollar question in UPSC preparation. In our earlier series, we discussed international issues in connection with 2020 and I pointed out the topics from which UPSC framed the questions. I pointed out the questions from which UPSC asked international issues in 2017, 2018 and 2019. International issues. What to study in international issues? What question UPSC asked in international issues? What's the approach an aspirant should keep while reading newspapers and magazine to get international issues question right. This is a million dollar question in UPSC arena. In the earlier video, in the earlier series, I stressed on 2020 international issues questions. During that time, I pointed the topics from which UPSC framed questions in 2017, 2018 and 2019. In today's video, in today's discussion, I'm going to give exact clarity in connection with 2017, 2018, 2019 topics and the questions related to the same topics. So once again, welcome to International Issues. In this particular video, I try to clarify the approach you're supposed to require in the International Issues. Dear aspirants, welcome to Learning Radius. In UPSC preparation, the most important strategy required is survey, analyze, study, and revise. Survey and analyze the previous questions and study and revise as according to that. So survey and analyze the international issues, questions and topics and study and revise as according to the requirement. Once again, survey and analyze the previous question, nature and character, then study and revise the current affairs with that understanding. Understanding the nature and character of UPSC question will help you to study current affairs with utmost clarity. What to study that is the most important question in UPSC preparations. This video, this discussion gives you a clarity regarding the topics from which UPSC framed questions from preliminary examination. This video gives you a clarity regarding the topics from which UPSC framed questions for preliminary examinations. So don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell. So don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get the videos and notifications. And also download Learning Radius app to get updated current affairs and question papers. The Learning Radius Premium Preliminary Test in Learning Radius app help you to cover and understand your standard of preparation in all topics. When you work out Learning Radius Premium Preliminary Test in Learning Radius app, you will get separate pie chart and all India ranking for each test. The analytics, this analytics will help you sharpen your overall studies. In this discussion, I will analyze the topics of international issues related questions of UPSC preliminary 2017, 2018 and 2019. In this discussion, in this video, I will analyze the topics of international issues related questions of UPSC preliminary 2017, 2018 and 2019. In 2017, UPSC asked 13 questions. The topics from which international issues question framed in 2017 UPSC preliminary examinations were Global gender gap, global gender gap index, nuclear security submits, Asia Pacific Ministerial Conference on Housing and Urban Development, Global Climate Change Alliance, UN Habitat, Broad Based Trade and Investment Agreement, Chabaha Port, Mediterranean Sea and its borders, Global Infrastructure Facility. Climate and Clean Air Coalition, Indian Ocean Dipole, Indian Ocean Naval Symposium, Trade Facilitation Agreement. I repeat, Trade Facilitation Agreement, Indian Ocean Naval Symposium, Indian Ocean Dipole, Climate and Clean Air Coalition, Global Infrastructure Facility, Mediterranean Sea and its border. You can see a line there. It is intertwined right from 7th onwards. It is intertwined. Right from 8th onwards, it is intertwined with international and economic and social development, international and geography, international and environment. That is why I put a line there. Then Chabaha Port, Broad-Based Trade and Investment Agreement, UN Habitat, Global Climate Change Alliance, Asia-Pacific Ministerial Conference on Housing and Urban Development, Nuclear Security Summits, and Global Gender Gap. 
global gender gap index so it's very important to understand the topics from each upsc frame the question and moreover it's very very important to understand how beautifully upsc framed questions from all this topics so let's start with 2017 international issues question the first one is which of the following gives global gender gap index ranking to the countries of the world they asked world economic forum un human rights council un women world health organization and we all know it is world economic forum it's a very direct question so the answer of um, global gender gap index is world economic forum second question consider the following statement the nuclear security summits are periodically held under the aegis of the united nations the international panel on fissile material is an organ of international atomic energy agency which of the statements given above is correct upsc is telling one only two only both one and two neither one nor two look to the question and understand the nature and character of upsc asset nuclear security summits are periodically held under the aegis of the united nation now that is a wrong statement the international panel on fissile material is an organ of international atomic energy agency that is also a wrong statement which of the statement given above is a correct when you look into the both statement as such is wrong the nuclear security summits were there in the discussion in that particular time especially in 2017 and upsc asked a question but both the statement upsc framed as it is wrong the first statement is wrong and the second statement is wrong so the answer is neither one nor two third question with reference to asia pacific ministerial conference on housing and urban development consider the following statement the first apm chud was held in india in 2006 on the theme emerging urban forms policy responses and governance structure india hosts all the annual ministerial conference in partnership with adb apec and asia which of the following statement given above is correct this question can be considered as a national issue also but i discuss the same question in national and international because it's having national and international relation now here upsc is telling which of the statement given above is correct one only two only both one and two neither one nor two now if you look the statements very carefully you can understand the first apm chud was held in india in 2006 on the theme emerging urban forms policy responses and governance structure that particular theme as which is wrong india host all the annual ministerial conference in partnership with adb apec and asean all the annual ministerial conference that is also wrong so both statement as it is wrong neither one nor two neither one nor two is the answer now let's come to the next question a very important and significant question with reference to the global climate change alliance which of the following statements is are correct it's an initiative of the european union it provides technical and financial support to targeted developing countries to integrate climate change into their development policies and budget it is coordinated by world resource institute wri and world business council for sustainable development wbcsd and upsc climate change alliance the first statement and the second statement as it is right it is coordinated by world resource institute and world business council for sustainable development nowhere it is mentioned the third statement is wrong so the first statement and second statement is right and the third statement as it is wrong so if you take one and two and one and two is right so answer is a one and two now let's come to the next question with reference to the role of un habitat in the united nation program working towards a better urban future which of the statement is a correct un habitat has been mandated by the united nation general assembly to promote socially and environmentally sustainable towns and cities to provide adequate shelter for all its partners are either government governments or local urban authorities only un habitat contributes to the overall objective of the united nation system to reduce poverty and to promote access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation so by giving three statement upsc is asking is 1 2 3 is right or 1 and 3 is right 2 and 3 is right or 1 only that's the option when you look back to the statement once again un habitat has been mandated by the united nation general assembly to promote socially and environmentally sustainable towns and cities to provide adequate shelter for all that's absolutely right that is basically what is un habitat is it partners are either governments or local urban authorities only that's a absolute wrong statement 
UN Habitat contributes to the overall objective of the United Nations system to reduce poverty and to promote access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation. First statement and third statement is right and second statement is wrong. So from the option, we can tell it is one and three. So the first statement and third statement as it is absolutely right. And the second statement as it is wrong. So our option B is right here. Next question that comes to broad based trade and investment agreement BTIA is sometimes seen in the news in the context of negotiation held between India and European Union, Gulf Cooperation Council, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It's very simple. Those who read newspaper, they can get it directly. BTIA is rela directly related with European Union. So the answer is A, European Union. That comes to the next question. What what is the purpose? What is the importance of developing Chabaha port by India? What is the importance of developing Chabaha port by India? India's trade with African countries will enormously increase. India's relation with oil producing Arab countries will be strengthened. India will not depend on Pakistan for access to Afghanistan and Central Asia. Pakistan will facilitate and protect the installation of a gas pipeline between Iraq and India. It's a very direct question and a very simple question. There is nothing to think about what is the importance of developing Chabaha port by India. India will not depend on Pakistan for access to Afghanistan and Central Asia. Answer is C. Now, let comes to the next question. It is international. At the same time, it is related to geography. Very significant question. Mediterranean Sea is a border of which of the following countries? Jordan, Iraq, Lebanon and Syria. Select the correct answer using the code given below 1, 2, and 3, 2, and 3, 3, and 4, 1, 3, and 4. As an aspirant, you have to think Mediterranean Sea is a border of which of the following country? Mediterranean Sea, as it is not bordering with Jordan, it is not bordering with Iraq, it's bordering with Lebanon, it's bordering with Syria. So, one is wrong, two is wrong, answer is three and four. It's Clearly elimination. If a person is having idea that uh, it's not bordering with Jordan, it's not bordering with uh, Iraq, he can come to Lebanon and Syria. If he's having any confusion with uh, Lebanon and Syria, he can come to the answer C very easily. Now, Jordan is not the, Iraq is not the, Lebanon is the, Syria is the, three and four assets sharing the border and answer is C. The next question is the global infrastructure facility is an ASEAN initiative to upgrade infrastructure in Asia and financed by credit from Asian Development Bank, World Bank collaboration that facilitate the preparation and structure on structuring of complex infrastructure public private partnership to enable mobilization of private sector and institutional investor capital. Collaboration among the major banks of the world working with the OECD and focused on expanding the set of infrastructure projects that have the potential to mobilize private investment. UNCT AD funded initiative that seek to finance and facilitate infrastructure development in the world. This all were the four options related to the question number nine. The global infrastructure facility is an, the answer is B. World Bank collaboration that facilitates the preparation and structuring of complex infrastructure, public private partnership to enable mobilization of private sector and institutional investor capital. Consider the following statement Climate and Clean Air Coalition, CCAC, to reduce short lived climate pollutant is a unique initiative of G20 group of countries. The CCAC focuses on methane, black carbon, and hydrofluorocarbons. What, which of the statement given above is correct? One only, two only, both one and two, and neither one nor two. So it's about CCAC. So when you look into CCAC, the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, CCAC, to reduce short-lived climate pollutant is a unique initiative of G G20 group of country, as it is a wrong statement. Because it is an initiative of UNEP, not by G20. Next one, CCAC focus on methane, black carbon, and hydrofluorocarbon. That is absolutely right. They focus on this three. And answer is one is wrong and two is right. So two only. Now let's come to the next question. With reference to Indian Ocean Dipole, IOD, sometime mentioned in the news, 
while forecasting Indian monsoon, which of the following statement is correct? One, Indian Ocean dipole phenomena is characterized by, characterized by a difference in sea surface temperature between tropical western Indian Ocean and tropical eastern Indian Ocean. They changed it, they made it eastern Pacific Ocean. So the first statement as it is wrong. Now, an Indian Ocean dipole phenomena can influence an El Nino impact on the monsoon. That is right. So when you take the statement, it's the first is wrong and the second is right. So it's easy to tell two only. So the answer is two only. Let's come to the next question, which is related to IONS, that is Indian Ocean Naval Symposium. Inaugural IONS was held in India in 2015 under the chairmanship of chairmanship of the Indian Navy. IONS is a voluntary initiative that seeks to increase maritime cooperation among the navies of the littoral states of Indian Ocean region. Which of the above statement is the correct? One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. When you look into inaugural IONS was held in India in 2015 under the chairmanship of the Indian Navy, that is wrong. Because the inaugural IONS, as it happened in 2008, not in 2015, the first statement is wrong. IONS is a voluntary initiative that seeks to increase maritime cooperation among navies of the littoral states of the Indian Ocean region is absolutely right. So the second statement is right and the first statement is wrong and the answer is B. Next question is, consider the following statements. India has ratified the Trade Facilitation Agreement TFA of WTO. TFA is a part of WTO Bali Ministerial Package of 2013. TFA came into force in January 2016. Which of the statements given above is the correct? One and two only, one and three only, two and three only, one, two and three. When you look into the statement, TFA came into force in January 2016, as it is a wrong statement. It is absolutely wrong. It came into force in 2017. So when you cut the three, you can cut D, you can cut C, you can cut B. So the answer is one and two. India has ratified the trade facilitation agreement. TFA of WTO is absolutely right. TFA is a part of WTO Bali Ministerial Package of 2013. That is also right. So the statement one and two is right and three is wrong. So B, C, D is not the option. Answer is A. But understand the nature and character of the question and how beautifully UPSC is framing. But when you consider 2018 and 19, 2018, 2019 with 2017 question paper, 2017 question paper and the topics of 2017 related to international and the questions of 2017 international is comparatively easy.